Hi, I'm Robert Reeves, CTO of Liquibase. Over the past 20 years, we've seen amazing advancements in how we develop and deliver software. However, our development workflow has left the database behind. Simply put, Liquibase data is version control and collaboration for your database. Today, I'll show you how to quickly provision a developer instance of Oracle Database, make changes to Oracle Database, and then commit the change. I will then show you how to roll back and forward your changes. Let's get started. So Liquibase data requires a Docker container to run. Uh, we're leveraging Docker Desktop to do that. And so what we need to do is have Oracle Database in a container. Now, uh, my friends over at Oracle, uh, specifically Gerald Venzel, who I am totally mispronouncing his name, did this awesome container. Um, the one thing that we need to add to it is we need to add a volume, and I'm going to go ahead and expose uh, the Oracle, ports, uh, Oracle port here, 1521. And so once I create this container, um, I can then start using it with Liquibase data. And so um, we've already built this previously. That's why it's so peppy here, uh, but it doesn't take long. Um, and so let's go ahead and make sure that that got created. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's handy. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is I need to wire this up um, with uh, Liquibase data and, or rather this Docker container and Liquibase. Um, if you go ahead and look at my Liquibase properties file, you'll see how I did that. So we're connecting with JDBC. Uh, here's the URL. This is provided by the uh, container itself, um, this database name. And so um, username and password. I'm going to use XML today for my changelog, but we can also use YAML, JSON, formatted SQL. Um, for Liquibase veterans, um, this is the new thing here uh, where I have my Liquibase, uh, or rather my repository name. This is a convenience function for Liquibase data uh, to help me not have to type it over and over again. And then we're just going to turn off Liquibase Hub uh, for this demonstration. Now, the next thing I need to do is, uh, well, let's just go ahead and run it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and register this container with Liquibase data. And so um, let me go ahead and copy this command and I'll go ahead and walk you through it. So we're doing Liquibase data run. This is the last time I'm going to have to call out my repo. Um, and uh, But you'll notice that these environment variables, this is exactly what you would use if you wanted just to run this Docker container. Remember, that's what Liquibase data is doing. Um, and so you can go and see uh, this page on um, Docker Hub to, to get some more information about it. So we're going to go ahead and start it. And what this is doing is it is uh, two things. One, it is starting Oracle Database based on that um, Docker file that I created. And it is also registering it as a um, repository that Liquibase Data is going to manage. Now, if we go ahead and do um, liquibase data ls, we'll see that, uh, well, we have one repository listed there. Um, so you could have more than one. Um, and then let's go ahead and check out um, that Docker container and see if it started. So I'm going to do docker logs follow fa5. I think that should be enough. And so it looks like um, it's doing all the things that it needs to do first uh, to start up. And once this gets started, we're going to be able to make changes, um, version those changes, um, and then roll forward and roll back, um, or roll back and roll forward um, as we see fit. Now, while this is starting up, um, well, now that it's started up, we can then connect to uh, the database. I'm using dBeaver. Um, so we're going to go ahead and edit the connection. And you can see uh, what those values are. 
So it lines up with exactly what we did when we started it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, connect to this. And we'll see that we have our liquid base schema. And we'll see that we'll have no tables. Now, this is probably a good place for us to do our first commit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we will go and do liquid base data commit, pass in a message. And this will be um, our first commit. So now we can do liquid base data log. And it's going to tell us all the commits in that repository, which is one. <laughs> so um, now that we have our baseline, um, let's go ahead and make a change. Now, the first thing, well, look, if you're going to make a change to a database, I can't think of a better tool to do that than Liquibase. And so to get started, I am going to use generate change log which will create that changelog.xml file for me. Now, if you have a database that has objects in it, Liquibase is going to interrogate it um, and reverse engineer that schema uh, into a structured document. That's pretty cool. But remember, um, this is empty. Um, and so you'll see that we just have database change log here. So we need to add change sets. A change log is comprised of change sets. Now luckily, I have one over here that I can copy and paste in. And simple one, we're going to create a table with what, four columns here. Okay, neat. And so now I should be able to go over here and do liquid base update and persist that change to the database. Now look, it doesn't have to be tables. It could be anything you want to do, uh, any DDL, even DML. Um, but nice simple example. Um, and it's going to create that table. But the way Liquibase works is it also has meta tables that keep track of the database schema. And that's what database change log and uh, database change log here and database change log lock is just to make sure that only one person is changing the database at a time. Don't worry, it's real fast. Um, but if we go to customer columns, and we'll see, oh, there's our four columns. What's pretty cool is that I had Varkar in my change log, but Liquibase knows that Oracle prefers Varkar too. Okay, cool. It changed it for me. So now that I've persisted this change, now would be a good time to make my second commit. And we will go over here. And again, if we do database, a uh, Liquibase data log, we'll see that we've got two commits there. Now, look, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> bad things happen to good software, and we might need to roll back to that first change. No problem. That's the whole point of versioning, right? And so if I go to my first commit, get this commit ID, it's going to do exactly that. Remember, we versioned that first um, you know, that, that empty Docker container running Oracle inside of it. Um, and so what this is going to do is going to shut down the currently running Docker instance. It's going to mount that previous volume um, to the container and it's gonna start it up again. And so if we do, um, let's just go ahead and check out the logs, Docker logs follow. And it looks like it's starting up again. So when this is complete, we're going to be able to go to dBeaver and see that those tables are no longer there, just like it was before. Again, the whole point of versioning things. And it's not there. Well, you know what? I changed my mind. Looks like um, I actually did want that change. 
So now I can go back to um, Liquibase data log and I can run my checkout with the other commit ID. And it was this one right here. And again, same exercise. Um, lather, rinse, repeat. Um, now, of course, you know, what's the whole point of versioning if you can't collaborate with your other team members? Now, I'm not showing this today, but you certainly have the ability after a liquid based data commit to do a liquid based data push. And we can push to today to S3 buckets or an SSH server. And um, that allows your teammates to do liquid based data clone, liquid based data pull. Um, again, aligning with how you develop your code today. Um, so let's go ahead and see how we're doing uh, with that container, see if it started. And it looks like it has. And so now if we go back to dBeaver, and we hit refresh, we should, we should see those three tables again. Um, now remember, I am showing just tables, but anything that you can create in Oracle database, well, we'll version that as well, even the data. Hope that was helpful. Thank you.